Hi, this is Randy Hexter with a piano lesson. Today we're going to talk about chord voicings, and we're going to look at a specific way of organizing some chord voicings. Voicings on the piano or on any instrument is how we uh, distribute and choose the notes that we're going to use to give a particular chord. And in this case, let's look at this one. Now, this is the traditional music theory way of defining a chord, which is starting with a root, stacking third, fifth, seventh, and so forth. Now, it's great, it gives us a colorful chord. The problem with it, of course, is that uh, in order for me to connect to another chord, I'm gonna have to have, I have to really think about where every note's going. Let's say I wanted to do the same chord on F. Well, I would have to pick up my hands, put them there. While there's nothing wrong with those sounds, they're not really connected well because there's a big jump. And in terms of on the piano, it's awkward. I have to pick up my hands. Um, and whatever top note we've decided on, in this case, it's the 13th, ends up being the top note of whatever uh, Any time we play this, see up here, still the 13th. Not really that versatile, a good sound, but really needs to be, we need to have some other methods of organizing ourselves when we're going to play uh, harmony on the keyboard. Furthermore, um, when we have uh, a system, we won't have to think of one note at a time. Instead, we can think about a group of notes as one thing, and then um, that frees up our, our thinking to move on. Um, today, what we're going to talk about is using an interval shape, or a group of notes separated by specific intervals to create a building block that we can use in a lot of different ways to create chord voicings. Now today we're going to start with kind of a basic one or a pair of basic ones. Uh, this one is called, uh, and I call it a T4, what we have here is tritone and fourth. Now this is just a sort of a pet name I have for it, it isn't really um, anything official, but it does describe the interval structure, tritone and fourth. Now. The other shape we're going to work with is tritone and third. This is also, it's related. Um, both of these are going to have the tritone at the bottom, giving us the option for playing uh, chords with tension in them, dominant chords, and so forth. Um, there's a lot of ways we can enhance these. We're going to talk about that in a future lesson. Let's talk today about using these basic shapes, these two basic shapes, uh, to build a variety of interesting chords. Now I want you to remember there's a lot of shapes. This is just two really nice, useful ones to start with. Now, uh, let's look at the T4 shape. And uh, these shapes really become useful when we start associating them with an interval above the bass note. Uh, let's take a C as a nice uh, bass example and build this T4 shape on the third of C, which would be an E. And the result is a dominant 7, 3, flat 7, sharp 9. A uh, classic uh, sound there that uh, is going to be very useful in most jazz progressions. Uh, let's also take that same T4 shape and put it on the flatted seventh, or in this case, B flat of C. Now we have again a dominant chord, flat seven, third, 13, giving us dominant 13 or C13, C713. Um, again, uh, an incredibly important chord uh, in a, almost any progression. Um, now, a couple more applications that maybe aren't quite as fundamental uh, is to take your T4 shape and put it on the flat third now. Here's a C with an E flat as the bottom note of our shape. Right? This would end up being a flat third, sixth, and nine, or 13 and nine, a uh, minor Dorian kind of chord. And um, it has a nice color. Even though it's missing the fifth, it actually sounds complete. Um, let's also take our T4 shape and create an even more uh, sketchy, incomplete chord. Let's start on the flat two or flat nine. Now, this only has root, fifth, and flat nine here. Flat nine, fifth, root. But it still evokes a Phrygian kind of color. Right? And. Uh, because you might have melody notes or you can add tones to these uh, chords, you can end up with a rather rich sound. Now, the complement or uh, uh, sort of uh, partner to the T4 shape is one I call T3. Again, a sort of a, just a, a basic name for it. Tritone, major third on the top. Now again, this can form a, a bunch of different colors. Let's build it on the third of C. Third, flat seven, major nine, right? So a dominant nine chord. Now, uh, let's build the same T 
three shape on flat seven. Now it's flat seven, third, sharp five, which is, again, a very useful chord. And uh, you'll end up with uh, um, the sharp five on the top and, and a good altered dominant shape there. Uh, finally, a couple other ones, putting the T3 on the sixth. Back to the minor six chord. This time it's six or 13, flat third and fifth. Back to that bossa nova uh, chord for you. And then finally, uh, putting it on the fifth, which would be T3 on the fifth. Again, the flat nine pops up fifth and fourth or 11th. This could be thought of as a sus flat nine chord. Again, the Phrygian sound, right? Okay. Uh, these are all the applications of these two chords. Now, let's uh, uh, look at how these might be connected together really quickly. The first one is a T3 on the third gives us a dominant nine chord. Great. Now, what if I wanted to move to F? Well, if I pick it up, I can do the same thing on F, but we're back to the problem we had earlier, which is picking up our hand. Well, the complementary nature of these two shapes really uh, steps in. Take a look at this. I play a C9 chord by playing T3 on the third. When I want to go to an F chord, I simply play T4 on the flat seven of F, which happens to be, as you can see, very close voice leading with half steps. And I end up with a, uh, a connection between those chords. And I can go on and continue and play T3 on B flat, T4 on E flat, and so forth. And I end up with a uh, procession of chords moving by fourths, but my, my chord voicing never moves more than a half step. Uh, this is an example of how these voicings could be used as left hand patterns for you to practice. Next lesson, I'm going to show you how to practice these through the 12 keys and how to add the optional notes to these chords, uh, making them richer, either notes inside the chord or notes added above the chord to make them a more complex color. So hope that's something you can use and have a great day.